Well, that was fantastic, and uh, apologies first of all for any technical problems, but I don't think, Thanks, for, for me, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, it was a really sort of an energetic, powerful piece of filmmaking there. Um, I suppose, you know, first of all, first question, are you a downer or an upward? <laughs> well, um, I didn't, I did play, but not until the film was finished. Ah. I was born south of the river, so I play, uh, I played down. Right, so you yes. are, you have, do have a vested I did, interest. I, I did play, yeah. <laughs> Do we have any, uh, anyone from Ashbourne here? Ah, are you upwards or downwards? I'm an upwards. And you are? Well, I'm from Utah, so I'm not really Don't be a downward, I mean. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say downward. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, so, you, so Peter, you have a vested interest. So, what, what inspired, what was your original inspiration to, to make the film then? You were from where you were born? You yeah, was, I, was, I, was, um, I was born quite close to where this game is played. And I remembered when I was very young seeing a picture of this, uh, of this very, very happy looking man. Uh, in this, uh, in this it seemingly black and white picture, except it, it wasn't. It was just really muddy brown, <laughs> and it was really just, just you know, you could just see it was just the joy of playing this game, and this image stuck in my mind. Right. And then, um, and then we saw uh, a magazine article in a soccer, uh, soccer magazine. Okay. And it was really kind of disparaging about the game. Right. And so I remember that image and knew something that was not quite right. So we uh, decided to go and investigate and see if we could make a documentary about uh, about this uh, this subject. Okay, so the two worlds, the joy of this photo and this sort of negative article, would make you think there's something something wrong there. Okay, so how, how did you get everything in place? What was the sort of starting point? Because there's obviously a lot of technical work that had to go into this. Yeah. Just, um, get to know the community. I imagine first of all was that. Yeah, it's an unusual documentary because it literally involved you know the whole town. Mm. So. You know, you have releases that uh, everyone's got to sign off that they they're okay in having their picture or their interview in the uh, you know in, in the film, and we got up to just over a thousand releases. Wow! <laughs> so it really did involve the town, and yeah. to get into the town, we were really fortunate because we met a lady uh, called Yvonne Hillesay, who's credited in the film. Right. And she was really like the gatekeeper of the town because what what has she been what you know she, what she's been doing mm. is recording the games for the players. Oh. Uh, over the years, so she knew all the players, okay. and she had great access to other people that was interest, were interested in Shrove Tide and Ashbourne. So she introduced us to some players and to the committee, right. and bit by bit we gained their trust until they said, okay, well, it's, it's okay, you can come and make a documentary about our game. But they were very concerned about outsiders coming in to do a feature about this, because mm. It's come at a time where a lot of people want this game to stop. They see it as a violent game, which you know we we we've heard about mm. in the documentary, and the, so the whitening down of you know of our uh, you know of whitening out of our, our colour and and, mm. and stopping our stopping our freedom. But as you saw, um, you know this is the lifeblood of this community. Yeah. Very much. And they have been able to keep it. They have been able to keep it going. So there's a lot of trust placed in the filmmakers to come into that place. Uh, to make this you could have gone. You could because you could have gone a number of ways. You could have gone. Oh, this is a real violent sport, and it shouldn't be played anymore. But I, I think sort of one of the things that came up from me was it. It seemed very balanced because obviously you're doing the downers, the uppers, the, the history, the heritage, and the violent aspects sort of came in. Mm -hmm. But it felt like it wasn't too violent. It felt like you know it, it didn't go because I, I read read up on the rules of the sport. It's say one of the rules was uh, no murder or manslaughter. <laughs> as a rule, which is great, but it, it never even sort of goes beyond that. That the St John's ambulance there said was the worst was somebody had a dislocated arm or yeah. sword or something, and and some bloody noses and things, and and that's it. And it could, it looks potentially life threatening in there, but yeah. it's not. I think that's perhaps is that is that the reason reason that why people want to ban it because it looks like it might kill. Yeah, I mean, people used to die playing this game. This game was played throughout the British Isles, and uh, there, there were variations of this game, the Shrove Tide game, which were particularly violent. Right. Um, I think you can call this game now brutal. I mean, it's mm. a really brutal, hard game to play. Mm. But uh, there's a respect. I mean, if you are stuck and you fall down in the middle of that hug, mm. both sides will just say, stop. And right. They will, they will pick out that player. So that they won't suffocate. Okay. Um, so there, there, there is that. Because um, people get injured in rugby and football, motor racing. You know, there are sports out there which have far more serious injuries than were represented in <laughs> in, in the Ashbourne Shrove Tide match. So uh, I think in that sense, it seemed yeah, it seemed like there was a family atmosphere that everyone knew each other. 
which is why they knew what was on each side. So in that sense, there's a sort of safety net there of humanity. There is, but as you can imagine, I mean, you can imagine ensuring this game. <laughs> you know, and here at the end, we hear Blanc say they should play it everywhere. But I mean, for example, I mean, bringing that to America would be an extremely, I mean, it would be an impossible thing to do to ensure something like that. And there lies one of their main problems, is mm -hmm. that they have to ensure everything and everyone. Right. And it's very difficult to get that insurance policy, and it's very expensive to get that insurance policy. Oh. So here it's we go into the bureaucracy of admin. Yeah, you, you live in America now. Uh, do we have any Americans in at all? Any from the US? Um, because you've, you've made this, you, you came over here to film, but then a lot, all the post-production has happened in the States, mm -hmm. and you've shown it in America. And what's, what's, the, what's been the American reaction to, to the film? Well, so far we've had only, only really positive reviews. The film has played now in four festivals in the US. And uh, people really, really do enjoy it. They respond very well to it. And they wish they had something like this in their community. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's what makes it very uh, special, I think, for the audience, is that desire to have something like this, which they could call their own. Mm -hmm. um, something which is you know, that traditional. Uh, they, they, really are, they really are attracted to that. And, uh, and of course, all the sports fans really, uh, you know, really, really appeals to them as well because of American, you know, American, American football as well. Mm. No, I must admit, I did feel a bit jealous. I didn't go up there and didn't give it a go. Um, did you? Have you taken part? Yeah, a couple of times. Ah, and uh, had. <laughs> you mean didn't get stuck in? I got the feeling there was a sort of resurgence of a sort of girl power in there a bit. No, no, there seem to be two groups of females uh, in, the, in the kind of sense of, oh yes, I don't mind cooking and taking this out. No, actually, I want to get stuck in. Is there sort of a change in mindset? Do you have friends that take part? Girlfriends that take part? No, well, I don't. I don't know anyone that um, any girls that live in Ashbourne. So right. I'm sure I would. I would get stuck in actually. Yeah, I'd you would. That, yeah. Next year. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I suppose the thing that also struck me is, you know, the camera work uh, is phenomenal. You get really stuck, uh, your cameraman got really stuck in at some point, so there's yeah. some shots over the top where you actually see a cameraman right in the middle of the hug there with a sort of camera, I don't know if you saw that. And it's like, uh, wow, the, how, many camera, how many cameramen did you use and how did you coordinate all that? Yeah, we had um, seven. Okay. And uh, because of the low-budget documentary, we uh, what we said to the cinematographers was that you know bringing the camera that you most like and most used to to get the most out of it. Okay. So as a result of that, we had all these different formats, and then um, the DP uh, Lance Accord came in with uh, film to right. actually film the, 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 the main game. Right. We actually filmed several games following. But that was the that was the game that we ended up focusing on, and then we built the you know we built the story around that. But what we did is very simply we just gridded the whole town. So with walkie talkies we could tell we could tell the cinematographers where to go uh, when we spotted the ball. So we were covered in all of these areas, including both of the both of the goals as well as Sturston and Clifton. Yeah, I, I really love those those shots actually at the goals. It really sort of showed the community side of it, but the passion and the expectancy and, and the use of mobile phones now, which I imagine is sort of you know, quite new before how they would have transmitted, how they thought, it's over in that field, <laughs> shouting across or you know, pigeons or something. Um, so I, 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 let's open it out to the audience. Uh, do we have any questions uh, from, 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 the, from the audience? Yes. What do you, obviously it's a quite a violent game, but I really like the actual sentiment of it, but what do you want the main message of the film to be? Great question. Well, I think it's very, it, it, I think it's very straight on and very, very simple really. I think that, you know, both in, you know, both talked about America and here, I think that for a lot of people, you know, living today, it's a, you know, it's a real struggle to make and ends meet and uh, they, you know, really sort of chasing, you know, how to, you know, pay for things and keep up a certain standard of, of life or what they think is a good standard of life. But I think what this game shows us in the community is really, in many ways, what, you know, the meaning of life is not valued in dollars, uh, dollars or pounds, hectares or acres. It's, it's, it's valued in this game and what this, and what this game really brings about, which is a very strong sense of community. And if you believe in that, um, it's incredible what actually then a community can do. Um, and what they've done is been able to carry on this medieval game against all the, all the odds. And it literally sort of splits the town in, in, in two for two days of the, of the year, but it really binds everyone together for the rest of it. And they really have, you know, creates a purpose and a meaning for them, which they really enjoy. And uh, I think that's, 
I, I think that's really what that's really what what we really wanted to you know simply and essentially show. I love the fact at the end you show the running total, like it's 125 to 119, so they're really close. The kind of it gives that idea of you know, the continuation. I love the shot with all the you know, all the generations holding the balls, and it just shows that this is something that's going to carry on and is a never-ending sort of flowing river of sport. I, I, I love that image. Uh, any other questions? Yes. You, you mentioned you used different formats. Can you tell us what you did when you pulled them together in post and how you? Saw yeah, I, I, I thank the editors at the beginning, and you know they they they, they work with we work with a, tri a lot of. A lot of footage. We had about 250 hours of footage, and a lot of archive footage as well. And it was all these different formats. But we were fortunate because both of these editors worked in different places in post houses in, in Los Angeles. So though it was a low budget documentary, we had access to actually ability to conform all of these different uh, all of, all of these different film formats and you know, tape, eight millimeter, super eight. It was all everything is there except for super thirty five and seventy millimeter. Um, and uh, so we were, we were we were really fortunate. That would normally you know cost a fortune to conform, but because we had them on our team, we were, we were able to do it really inexpensively. And um, Coloring House also helped us with that as well. Um, but uh, it was through you know through 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 that team that we were able to make it work. Yeah, can you tell us what year the film was made? Well, we started off in 2006, and then what we did is after we worked out who our characters were going to be, we kept on going back there. Actually, we finished the last shot in the film comes from 2010, and then we went on a sort of archive odyssey for about a year as well, editing all that together because we felt that was really important to put that in there to give it to give it context. You know how much technology's moved. What would you use now to do the film if you had cameras? To, I mean, DSLR, for example. I noticed that. Did you? You had one DSLR there, did you not? At the very yeah. Moment? Yeah, we did. Um, you know, film is a film is a beautiful film is a beautiful thing, and I think it really works especially well. And uh, you know, when you get into the in, into the water. Um, but I have no problem mixing. You know. Canons and, and film together in a documentary like this, I think it just uh, it would go out and I mean that's the other thing too is the cameras have come down so much in in, in, you know, in price. But um, and also if you if you lose a camera now, then it's not such a it's not such a, a, a big deal. And of course they're much quicker now to uh, to, to back up. So it probably be probably be a Canon, and then I'd still like to try and get a hold of a 60 millimeter camera and film. Great, thanks. Okay. Great questions. Um, any, any other questions? Yes? Not really a question, more of a comment, I suppose. Um, as an Ashburnian myself, um, I like to say well done for that because you made the town look really good. We're very proud of that, clearly. Um, I saw this showing by chance because I saw it on Facebook um, that it was down here in London. I'm sure the people of the town would be really grateful to see that film. So I'm sure we'd all be grateful if you could get a showing up in Ashbourne. One of these days. Yeah, yeah. 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 You pack the green man out anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Well, swap details. <laughs> well, actually, you know everybody in Ashland. <laughs> so, so, you, you, so you thought you saw the truth of that, of that, of that game? Yeah. I, I know some people. I, you know, Darren Waring's done plumbing jobs for us. Last, <laughs> last check, he's still waiting to fix the tap of my mum's. He's still not done it. <laughs> but I do know him, and I worked with John Ford, who was in there. Oh, yeah. So I, I do know some of the characters, yeah. You seem to capture the inertia very well inside the hugs, and the, also the way that you lifted the pride out of the town as well. Mm. Just for that, the inertia, especially for me, I was watching that, and I think it was an amazing um, play, the how you got those two to work together. I think I started off quite cynical and kind of thinking oh you know this is the town where I live and living down here now you always joke about the Midlands and blah, blah, blah. but actually by the end of it I thought oh that's really nice and I really like the fact that they've got this big sense of community and that they have this thing that brings them all together and they're really passionate about and they feel that they're so emotional when they actually score the goal and they it, it actually made me feel really really Good about Ashbourne, like like Tom said, it was it was really good. Yeah, I think definitely there's a strong drive of emotion through it, the, the pride in the community, the sense of community, but also the the sport itself, the actual match, uh, the, the slow motion shots you showed in the river, and it sort of fe it felt gladiatorial, but sporting at the same time with the the tactics used and uh, 
when you, you said you played it the following year, mm. so uh, who's, you played for the Downers, mm-hmm. is that right? Yeah. Uh, and what was, the, what was the score? I want to know. <laughs> what was the score in 2007? It, it, was, uh, it, was, it was one, no, I played um, uh, last year, it was one, it was one each. All oh, right. Are the, uh, the Downers on the up? Do you think? It seemed to be that. That seemed to be the force. Oh, it's, you know, it's <laughs> Who was like, a downer? Who was supporting downers? It's up, I was going. It's up and down. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, I mean, anything else you'd like to say about about the film at all? Any any other sort of thoughts? Anything sort of the difficulties you faced uh, in, in putting the final project together, and and what you're going to be doing with the film afterwards as well? Because yeah. it's obviously screening here. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'd like to thank you all for for coming and uh, your your comments. I mean, it means a lot. And um, we, we're, we're fortunate because we've got distribution in the, in the States for oh, next fantastic. year. Oh, fantastic. Great. So um, we've got a company that's putting money behind a, thea- a theatrical release, which we're really surprised about, but that's, uh, that, that's happened. And um, so that, that's, that's, very, that's very good that's news. That's brilliant. That's going to bring people to Ashbourne. <laughs> and then uh, we're off to, we're, we're back in New York next week at... Uh, um, festival called the Hamptons okay. in New York, and then we're off to uh, Moscow two weeks' time after that. So they are busy yeah. uh, trying to translate the Ash Ashburnian accents right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to turn out. Some but, subtitles for the uh... <laughs> yeah, but uh, that should that should be good fun. So that's what's that's what that's what's up next. Great, fantastic. Well, amazing for me just to say thank you very much, Peter, for coming. Yeah, thank uh, you, and uh, thank you, everyone, and let's all play next year. <laughs>